Hey everybody, welcome to Grace with Paul Gray. We're going to pick up today on our study of Luke 15, which is commonly, incorrectly called the parable of the prodigal son. Jesus is telling a story here, and there are a large group of people listening, a large group of sinners, and a large group of proud religious law keepers. And Jesus has told them about this terribly disrespectful son uh, who was so bad that he told his dad he wished he was dead so he could get his inheritance. And miraculously, the dad gave it to him. And he went and squandered it, and in the process, he broke almost all of the Jewish religious laws, which said, because of that, he should be stoned to death. Now, the Pharisees, the proud religious guys, they had Scripture. They had the Old Testament the facts of the letter of the law that said you should stone a child for disrespecting their parents. They didn't know it yet, but Jesus was about to turn their world upside down and override all the facts of their way of life and replace them with something much different and much better. In verse 17 of Luke 15, the boy is broke, he's destitute, he's starving, he's homeless, he's wasted, he's covered with pig poop and mud and Let's see what happens. When he came to his senses, the boy said, How many of my father's hired men have more than enough bread, and I'm dying here with hunger? I'll get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired men. Now, how would the people listening hear that? How would the sinners hear that? How would they see it? They'd go, well, that's probably his last chance. I hope the old man's in a good mood. How would the proud religious law keepers see that? Disgusting. The facts say stone him. Should have been stoned already. Now for sure. They saw him as unfit, unworthy, and unclean. How did God the Father see it? Let's see so he came up and came to his father. He got up and came to his father. Of course, the father in this story Jesus is telling is God the father. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him. He was looking for him, felt compassion for him, and ran and embraced him and kissed him. It was also against their laws for a Jewish man to show his bare legs. He would have had to have done that to raise up his robe so that he could run. The father now has really gone downhill in the proud religious law keeper's estimation. The facts were that the boy was filthy physically, morally, spiritually. Some people say, well, he came home to repent and ask for forgiveness. Not at all. He came, hoping, came home hoping to get some food and a minimum wage job. He had really dirty, stinky clothes covered with mud and pig poop. And not just clothes, his whole body was covered with them. He was emaciated. Ever see somebody after a several week drunk? And the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. The dad didn't even let him finish his speech. The facts were the boy had sinned against heaven and he was in society no longer worthy to be called his father's son. That's what the facts were. The sinners would have seen it that way. They knew what that was like because they'd been told they themselves were that way. The proud re law, religious law keepers would see it that way. Not only was he a sinner, but he had, in fact, disqualified himself from the family, even from the whole race of people, the whole nation. The facts said he should be stoned to death right then and there. How did the father see him? He didn't even see the facts. He didn't listen to them. He ignored them. He didn't even address them. The father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's eat and celebrate. Let's have a party, for this son of mine was as good as dead, and he's come to life again. He was lost, and he's been found. And they began to celebrate. How would the sinners who heard Jesus telling that story see that? They'd be amazed and shouting, Hooray! Oh, man, this is, this is great. This, maybe this could happen to us. How would the proud religious law keepers see it? Now they would see that the facts show the father was even more guilty than the boy. 
The father ignored all the facts. He didn't enforce the laws. He violated scripture. He broke all the cultural rules. He became, in their eyes, unclean, unfit, and unworthy himself. The father should be stoned to death in their eyes. What do you see? In order to really grasp what's happening here, you and I have to think of the worst of the worst of the worst in our society, breaking all the cultural and religious rules, all the norms of society, doing the worst of the worst, and see that God doesn't judge them or condemn them or punish them. He loves them and accepts them and gives them grace. Here's the question for us, for you and me. When God does that, and Jesus says that's what he's like, how do you and I see God? Are we willing to agree with what God does? Or do we stick with, no, that's right, God can't do that. God, no, that's not fair. Questions to ask for ourselves, aren't they? See you tomorrow, and we'll talk about this some more. Thanks, everybody.